Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Paper Tiger. Today's video episode, whatever these are called, is going to be on training a creative artist like an athlete. Now, about probably two Thanksgivings ago, I guess it's the last one was 2023, 2022. This was 2021 Thanksgiving. So like right after COVID, first one, everyone's back together, you know, that type of vibe. I was watching football with my parents and my grandparents, you know, as we usually do. And I don't remember if the Bengals were playing or what the deal was, but I was in like a Jamar Chase rookie of the year phase. Like I was, he was on my fantasy team and I was like, yes, like he's the best. Like he's awesome. Like, blah, like I was so hyped about him for no reason. And I remember I saw a YouTube video of his training regimen during COVID when he was at LSU. And I was looking at it and it was very diverse. Um, I will explain later in the video what it was, but basically he had like different day with a different subcategory for whatever he was working on. So like one day it would be like route running, one day it would be explosiveness, strength, you know, catching ability. And then one was rest, one was like a team meeting. So all of that, you know, condensed into one week. And I personally have always found a lot of parallels between athletes and artists. I mean, you could argue that both of them are performance tasks and therefore should be, you know, handled with the same type of performance psychology, performance training, performance, everything. So I was kind of like, well, what if we just trained artists like we trained athletes? Because artists don't get any help at all. I mean, if you're a division one athlete and you go to, you know, a division one school, minus Belmont, <laughs> but other, you know, sports oriented schools, you go there and you get, you know, tons of resources. You know, you, you get your own dining hall, you get your own housing, you're constantly looked after, you're protected, you're priority number one because you mean so much monetarily to the school. Whereas, you know, artists, when they go to a school, are not. I mean, even in art school, I know kids that go to Berkeley, they're not treated any different than anybody else, you know. It's not like, okay, you're here to become an artist to get better at this because you are at a music school. So let's, you know, put you through intensive, like, music training. The only place that does that is, like, a conservatory. Whereas, you know, something like Berkeley, something like Belmont doesn't have those resources and doesn't have, like, a specific, like, program to better artists and their creative abilities. So I was like, well, what if we trained artists like we trained athletes? So I made this document. We're going to take a look at it. Okay, so I'm using this, I don't even know where to look, I guess into the camera. Hello, hello. Uh, so I'm using this software that I just got today for Chrome. It's not very special and I don't really know how good it is. Um, but hopefully this is good quality and like you can read it on YouTube. Anyways, so this is the document I made in my old school OneDrive from Belmont. And essentially, it kind of goes over what I said earlier, at least our discipline, artists are undisciplined. I shouldn't say that I was kind of naive when I made this and like really confident and have had never taken a psychology class ever or anything exercise science related. It was just like, artists are undisciplined. I know what I'm talking about. And uh, most of them aren't, but some are. This, however, is very true. A lot of artists suffer from trauma and use art as a coping mechanism. They also, a lot of the time, adopt this suffering artist persona and look to drugs and, you know, instant gratification and other ways to make themselves feel better that, you know, isn't just directly through their art. And I was like, well, what if there's a way to breed and train creativity while also becoming disciplined and helping mental health? And so this is Jamar's uh, schedule that I was talking about earlier. Everything is a little different. However, there are a couple of repeats as he does strength Friday, Thursday, Tuesday, Monday. So he does a lot of strength training. Um, I mean, obviously he's a football player. That makes sense. So yeah, um, I don't know what I was putting here. Oh, okay. So I was like, well, Consider mastering it by the time you're 30, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is like very Malcolm Gladwell ass, like 10,000 hours. Well, there really is no way to quantify how long you've been doing something. I mean, I 
I've been talking to people my whole life, but I wouldn't consider myself, you know, a master communicator or public speaker or, you know, anything like that. So ignore this whole Malcolm Gladwell section. Um, but this is where I, uh, I really like what I was talking about. So I was like, well, we're counting any activity that gets the creative juices flowing as work. So for example, Jamar has training categories and then some categories under each category. So this was the speed one. And then, you know, 10 minutes of mobility, 20 minutes of movement, 20 minutes of sprints, and then, oh, 40 starts. Okay. Um, and he's got positioning drills. And so I was like, well, favorite, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So here's something that I did. I was like writing 30 minutes a day. We'll spend screenwriting 30 minutes a day journaling, repeat two or three times a day. That's a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Like if you're a writer yourself, you may have enough time for this, but I don't know if you have time to do three hours of just sitting there and writing. I personally find that is kind of forcing it a little bit, especially right off the bat. If you're trying to build this into a habit, which is kind of the point of this channel is to build creativity into a habit, I wouldn't do that. So I have like these kind of splits that I made up, but and then there's some stuff down here. These routines can be changed to two one hour sessions instead of four 30 minute sessions or three 40 minute sessions instead of six 20 minute sessions. The goal is to do an even amount of work for two, three hours of each day. I do like this. I wouldn't recommend doing the same thing for three hours a day. I think I'd like, this is not enough subcategorying here. Um, but I do think you can at least find two to three hours a day where you don't have stuff to do and you can work on your craft. Now, in my case, I'll use myself as an example. Um, let's just, yeah, we'll do one down here. So paper tiger. So, Paper Tiger can kind of be put down into a couple different categories. There's, you know, research, training, um, my own creative expression, I guess. So like, I really enjoy film photography. So just, you know, I guess photography, um, writing, because there eventually will be more writing to this. And I don't know, um, application. I mean, as of right now, application, community building, I don't have the biggest audience, obviously, but maybe at some point. So research, well, can read for 30 minutes a day. I probably read significantly more than that, but we'll put that there for now. Training. Now, the training aspect of this is more like getting used to speaking on camera, getting used to, you know, explaining ideas, articulating what is happening up here, you know, out there for everyone to understand. And that, you know, comes with practice and repetition. So I usually do a lot of rough drafts videos. Rough drafts. I'm going to put meditation under this too, just because it helps calm my nerves. Photography. Um, I usually don't do a lot of, I'll do this like every other week. Um, or not every week, every other day, but I'll usually go for like an hour. Every day. So yeah, rough drafts usually take around. 30 minutes. I meditate for probably close to 45 minutes, just at different times during the day, split up into different blocks. So like first one in the morning will be 10 minutes, it'll be a 20 minute one at lunchtime. And then like a 15 or 10 and another 10, and then you get the gist. Um, writing, I would like to write for an hour a day, but I don't know about that. And then application slash community building, you know, Whenever there are networking opportunities, go after those. Networking. You know, start Instagram or a blog, which I don't really like social media. 
besides YouTube because it's not really addicting, especially if you're just creating on it. Whereas Instagram is very easy to fall down the rabbit hole and just be like, just scrolling forever. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if there will be an Instagram. I like the idea of a blog or a website, but we'll see. And then I also want to make a Discord at some point. Now, I'm running out of time a little bit in this video, but essentially all of these can be broken down into categories. So if I write for an hour a day, you know, 30 minutes here, 30 minutes here, meditation kind of counts, but kind of doesn't. So, you know, we're at around, you know, two and a half hours of, you know, work. And then these, which can be built up for time. Um, but essentially what I think is really key about this is that when you kind of plan out and you structure out your day, similar to this, you tend to get less burnt out and less bored and you can dedicate each day to something different. So this was kind of a mock one as like what my day would be like, but there are days where there's going to be like a chance where I can network with a bunch of people and then it's like, perfect. I should go do that. Or there's going to be a day where I'm in the zone and I'm writing. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be a writing heavy day. Let me try some creative writing as well. Kind of mix it up. Um, I know I like keep looking like I'm about to burp. And it's because I am. I just ate dinner. And so that's why. <laughs> um, and then rough drafts as well. But as far as scheduling and like programming goes, um, I can link this in the bottom or make it available to in the bottom in the description um, and make this available to download if anybody wants to and anybody wants to read it and follow along with it. My other thing to go with this is diet, which will be covered more in another video. What is, you know, the correct diet for an artist? Personally, I think it's just anything that is low in refined sugar, low in, you know, sodium, maybe a glass of wine once in a while, honestly, you know, avoid energy drinks, stick with coffee. Um, but that, again, that'll be a whole nother episode, but definitely more Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, like veggies, grains, proteins, rice, you know, everything that you can kind of get nutrients from and then dark chocolate is very good for focus and thinking. So I usually start every day with chocolate. I'm now out of chocolate, which is really depressing. So I had fruity pebbles, French toast this morning. And guess how much work I got done after it? Zero. But it was delicious. So <laughs> that is a, this is my little video on this. I will link this in the description. Um, I guess I could do the diet one tomorrow. I don't know what the hell that voice came. <laughs> um, I guess I could do the diet one tomorrow. We'll see. Um, I also may do a more refined uh, video on this. But until then, adios. We'll see y'all folks tomorrow. Great song.